Could China's recent border deal with India be a prelude to shifting its focus toward Taiwan? That's the question many geopolitical analysts are asking in light of the major breakthrough reached in October 2024, when India and China agreed to a disengagement along their disputed Himalayan border. After years of military standoffs, particularly since the deadly 2020 Galwan Valley clash, both nations have finally come to a resolution over patrolling arrangements at key friction points like Demchok and the Depsang Plains. The agreement follows months of diplomatic efforts between Beijing and New Delhi, culminating in a commitment to ease tensions and restore the status quo along the line of actual control, LAC. With Indian and Chinese troops set to pull back, many view this as a significant step towards de-escalation. But here's the crucial part, what are the broader implications of this deal, and why now? Could this be part of a larger strategy by China to stabilize its western front, freeing up resources to concentrate on its eastern priority, Taiwan? The China-India border dispute is one of the most significant territorial tensions in Asia. With a shared boundary stretching over 3,400 kilometers, much of it undemarcated, skirmishes and disputes have been frequent. The 2020 clash in the Galwan Valley, which resulted in casualties on both sides, further inflamed tensions. Since then, both countries have maintained thousands of troops in the high-altitude regions of Ladakh, creating a precarious and costly standoff. But Taiwan represents a different kind of challenge for China. It's not just a territorial issue but a core matter of sovereignty for Beijing. Taiwan is central to China's vision of national rejuvenation, and Chinese leadership under Xi Jinping has repeatedly emphasized its importance. Recent years have seen increasing military activity around Taiwan, with Beijing viewing any U.S. involvement there as a direct threat to its territorial integrity. So, here's the big question, could China be strategically easing tensions with India to concentrate its military and diplomatic resources on Taiwan? If China is preparing for a more assertive approach to Taiwan, then reducing conflicts on its western front would be a logical step. In this video, we'll explore the details of the recent India-China border agreement, break down its implications, and examine whether this is part of a deliberate strategy by China to shift its focus toward Taiwan. Stay tuned as we dive deep into the dynamics at play and analyze the broader geopolitical chessboard. The China-India border conflict is rooted in historical complexities that go back decades. The origins of the dispute can be traced to the drawing of ambiguous borders during the British colonial era, where maps of India left large swathes of territory undefined or disputed. After India gained independence in 1947 and the People's Republic of China was founded in 1949, these unresolved territorial lines became contentious. The most significant confrontation between the two nations occurred in 1962 when they fought a full-scale war over disputed regions in the Himalayas. One of the main points of conflict was Aksai Chin, a high-altitude plateau that China controls but India claims as part of its Ladakh region. Aksai Chin is not just a barren, remote territory, it serves a strategic purpose for China, as it connects Tibet with Xinjiang, two of China's most sensitive regions. China built a key road through Aksai Chin in the 1950s, linking these areas and cementing its claim over the territory. However, for India, Aksai Chin remains part of Ladakh, and this has been a lasting point of dispute since the 1962 war. The legacy of this conflict continues to define the territorial disagreements between China and India, particularly in the regions of Ladakh, Demchok, and the Depsang Plains. Let's look at Ladakh, a region that serves as a critical strategic area for India. Located in the northern part of India, Ladakh's rugged and high-altitude terrain makes it difficult to control but highly valuable. Its location gives India a foothold in the western Himalayas, and it shares borders with China's Xinjiang and Tibet, as well as Pakistan. India's control of Ladakh also gives it a strategic buffer against both China and Pakistan, two of its biggest regional rivals. Further south is Demchok, a small but important village in eastern Ladakh that has seen its share of tensions. Demchok lies near critical supply routes, and both India and China claim this territory. For India, Demchok holds strategic importance for securing its broader control over eastern Ladakh. For China, controlling or contesting Demchok allows Beijing to put pressure on India in a vital region close to Tibet. Disputes over Demchok have been a recurring issue in the broader LAC tensions. One of the most critical regions of contention is the Depsang Plains. This high-altitude area lies near the Dulut Beg Oldi airstrip, one of the highest military airstrips in the world, controlled by India. Its proximity to the Karakoram Pass, a key gateway for China to project power into both Pakistan and Central Asia, makes the Depsang Plains strategically important. Since 2020, this area has seen continuous standoffs, with both sides accusing the other of intrusions. 
The lack of resolution in the Depsang region is a reminder of how deeply rooted the China-India border conflict remains. The most recent and significant escalation occurred in June 2020, with the Gowan Valley Clash, a deadly hand-to-hand -hand combat between Indian and Chinese troops. This incident, which resulted in the deaths of 20 Indian soldiers and an unknown number of Chinese casualties, was the first deadly conflict between the two nations in over four decades. It marked a turning point in their relations. Both sides ramped up troop deployments, and the high-altitude standoff has continued ever since, with tens of thousands of soldiers positioned in the harsh, freezing conditions of the Himalayas. The Gowan Valley clash was followed by a massive buildup of forces on both sides. India bolstered its military presence along the LAC, deploying more troops and upgrading infrastructure, including roads and airstrips in Ladakh. China, too, stationed significant forces, backed by heavy artillery, armored vehicles, and air defenses. Over the next four years, this standoff became the new normal, with both nations locked in a tense military face-off. Despite multiple rounds of diplomatic talks and military-level negotiations between 2020 and 2023, little progress was made. Both countries agreed to partial disengagement in areas like Pangong Tso and Gagra Hot Springs, but key friction points like Demchok and the Depsang Plains remained unresolved. These areas are crucial for both nations. India views these regions as integral to its territorial sovereignty, while China sees them as essential for securing its western borders. China has often refused to discuss the disengagement in Demchok and Depsang, labeling them legacy issues that predate the 2020 standoff, which has been a major sticking point in negotiations. In summary, the China-India border conflict is defined by its complexity, with both nations deeply entrenched in their territorial claims. The conflict is not just about land but also about strategic positioning in a region where geography, history, and national interests collide. In October 2024, India and China reached a landmark agreement addressing long-standing tensions along their contested border. This deal, which emerged just before the BRICS summit in Kazan, Russia, represents a significant step toward de-escalation between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. The agreement centers on two highly strategic areas, Demchok and the Depsang Plains, both located in the eastern Ladakh region. Demchok, a small yet crucial area near the Indus River, holds strategic value for both nations. Demchok has seen repeated incursions and standoffs, especially since 2020, due to its proximity to essential water resources and India's infrastructure in the region. In recent years, China has increased its presence near Demchok, reportedly setting up infrastructure and intermittently attempting to encroach on territory patrolled by Indian forces. For India, maintaining control over Demchok is critical for regional stability and water security, as any shift here could disrupt water resources vital to Ladakh's communities. The Depsang Plains, meanwhile, represent an even more strategic landscape. These plains lie close to India's Dalat Beg Oldi airstrip, a high-altitude military post, and the Karakoram Pass, which links China to Pakistan. Historically, the Depsang Plains have been a site of contention, with a serious Chinese incursion here in 2013 and further escalations in 2020. The plains mostly flat terrain enables easy mobilization of military forces, giving each side a potential staging area in any future conflict. This region is also strategically close to the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC, making it a sensitive area for India, given the corridor's significance to Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. The recent agreement allows both nations to resume joint patrolling in these contested areas, marking a potential return to pre-2020 status quo arrangements. This shift is notable because it reduces the probability of accidental clashes and re-establishes communication lines between troops, essential for lowering tensions along the line of actual control, LAC. The timing of this agreement is also significant. It was confirmed just as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping were expected to meet at the BRICS summit, suggesting a calculated diplomatic maneuver to facilitate high-level engagement. Their discussions are reported to have helped finalize this breakthrough, which comes after four years of intense standoffs and strained relations. This de-escalation could signify more than a peacekeeping measure, it might be a strategic move. Analysts are speculating whether China's interest in reducing border tensions is tied to a reallocation of resources toward other priorities, particularly Taiwan. With this agreement, China could stabilize its western front, enabling it to focus more intently on Taiwan amid rising tensions with the United States in the Indo-Pacific. However, questions remain about whether this deal reflects a concession from China. Some view the renewed patrolling rights as a potential win for India, suggesting that China might be ceding limited control over certain areas. 
Yet, neither side has confirmed any territorial concessions explicitly, leaving room for interpretation. Regardless, this agreement is a critical step in reducing tensions along one of the world's most volatile borders and re-establishing a framework for peace in the region. By restoring joint patrols and disengaging troops at these flashpoints, both India and China stand to benefit from a less militarized border, potentially signaling a long-term strategy to manage their rivalry through diplomacy rather than confrontation. The October 2024 border agreement between China and India presents a potentially strategic maneuver by Beijing. By reaching this agreement, China is easing its tensions on the Western Front, which could allow it to refocus resources toward its more critical Eastern priority, Taiwan. China has long been wary of managing a two-front conflict, juggling border tensions with India while simultaneously handling growing confrontations with Taiwan, where U.S. support is intensifying. Let's explore why China might be streamlining its military and diplomatic attention in this way. Engaging simultaneously on two major fronts would be a logistical and strategic nightmare for any military force, even one as large as China's. By alleviating tensions with India, China is potentially freeing up substantial military resources, troops, equipment, and funding that it can now allocate toward Taiwan. This shift makes sense when we look at the intensity and frequency of China's recent military activities around Taiwan. Over the past year, the People's Liberation Army, PLA, has conducted a record number of exercises in the Taiwan Strait, testing capabilities like amphibious landings, air defense, and blockade operations. In the latest Joint Sword 2024B exercises, China mobilized multiple naval and air units, with aircraft carriers like the Liaoning and Shandong deployed near Taiwan's waters, demonstrating a readiness for rapid response actions around the island. Additionally, China's Eastern Theater Command, responsible for Taiwan operations, continues to refine its combat coordination through frequent joint drills involving the Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, showcasing advanced technology and combat readiness across domains. These high-profile drills aren't just standard exercises, they signal China's intention to be combat-ready at a moment's notice should tensions escalate further with Taiwan or the United States. With reduced pressure on the Indian border, more PLA resources can be concentrated in the Eastern Theater, enhancing China's strategic leverage in the Taiwan Strait. This cooling of tensions with India may also be part of China's broader diplomatic calculation involving the Quad Alliance, the US, Japan, India, and Australia. Beijing has viewed India's participation in the Quad with suspicion, as it represents a coalition aimed at balancing China's influence in the Indo-Pacific. By reaching an agreement with India, China may be trying to prevent New Delhi from drawing even closer to the US and other Quad allies. As long as India remains focused on its own border stability, it is less likely to shift more fully into an anti-China stance within the Quad. For China, reducing the chances of a robust, Quad-led military posture allows it more breathing room around Taiwan, where it already faces the strategic challenge of US military presence and defense support for Taiwan. By easing its friction with India, China weakens the potential military utility of the Quad against it in the region. This maneuver gives China an opportunity to isolate Taiwan more effectively, should it wish to enforce a maritime blockade or test Taiwan's defensive perimeter without the threat of India strengthening its Quad commitments or engaging in Indo-Pacific security activities against China. China's focus on Taiwan isn't just strategic, it's deeply tied to its national vision under President Xi Jinping. Taiwan represents a linchpin in China's national rejuvenation, and reunification is a goal she has framed as central to China's historical destiny. As a self-governed island with its own democratic government, Taiwan defies Beijing's view of one China. For Xi, a successful reunification would be seen as securing a legacy for future generations and solidifying China's regional authority. Therefore, every resource freed up from the India border strengthens Beijing's strategic position vis-à-vis -vis Taiwan. China's view of Taiwan as non-negotiable has led it to bolster its military pressure through regular live-fire exercises, which signal its readiness to counter what it calls Taiwan's separatist acts. Exercises like Joint Sword 2024B are designed not only to intimidate Taiwan but also to send a clear message to the US. Beijing has made it clear that, despite international objections, it will continue military displays in response to Taiwan's assertions of sovereignty and it has shown readiness to escalate its actions should Taiwan's leadership move further towards independence. The United States' increased military support for Taiwan, including arms sales and naval presence, has only heightened China's sense of urgency. By de-escalating with India, China is, in effect, bracing itself to confront the mounting influence of U.S. support around Taiwan without the distraction of a major conflict on its western front. 
With more resources devoted to Taiwan, China stands ready to exert pressure across diplomatic, military, and informational fronts, making it clear that any future move by Taiwan toward formal independence will be met with immediate and likely forceful response. The India-China agreement, while easing a long-standing border issue, may very well be a strategic pivot for China, allowing it to redirect critical resources towards Taiwan. With India's involvement in the Quad potentially diminished, China gains a freer hand to concentrate its efforts on countering U.S. influence and securing its position in the Taiwan Strait. Taiwan remains central to China's regional strategy, and every action, whether military or diplomatic, is aimed at positioning Beijing to assert control over the island should the geopolitical climate demand it. The recent de-escalation agreement between China and India is more than just a resolution of a border standoff, it has far-reaching implications for India, China, and global geopolitics, particularly in the Indo-Pacific. For India, reduced border tensions with China offer a strategic reprieve. India's ongoing border focus with China has required significant resource allocation, especially in Ladakh and other high-altitude regions. This agreement allows India to redirect some of these resources to strengthen its role in the broader Indo-Pacific strategy, especially within the Quad, the US, Japan, Australia, and India. As a key member, India's primary role is to support a free and open Indo-Pacific, challenging China's influence. Additionally, India's alignment with the United States through the major defense partnership and its growing naval presence in the Indian Ocean aim to counterbalance China's ambitions. With reduced tensions along the northern border, India can focus more on maritime strategy and deepen ties with Quad members, enhancing its position as a regional power and a net security provider in the Indian Ocean. For China, this border agreement could signify a strategic shift toward Taiwan. With fewer demands on its western frontier, China can now concentrate resources on its eastern front, especially as U.S. support for Taiwan increases. The PLA's Eastern Theater Command has ramped up exercises around Taiwan, such as the Joint Sword 2024B drills, demonstrating readiness for rapid action. These exercises are intended to test joint operations capabilities, simulate blockades, and enforce control over the Taiwan Strait, sending a strong message to both Taiwan and its allies, particularly the United States. Moreover, with a focus on Taiwan, China aims to deter independence movements and reinforce its claims over the island. This agreement with India may represent China's broader strategy to reduce peripheral conflicts while consolidating military power in areas critical to its national ambitions, such as Taiwan and the South China Sea. The de-escalation also carries significant implications for global geopolitics. By easing tensions with India, China may be attempting to limit India's incentive to deepen its military role within the Quad. A less hostile border could lead to a more restrained Indian stance, giving China slightly more latitude in the Indo-Pacific. However, the US, Japan, and Australia are likely to respond by strengthening their own Indo-Pacific commitments to counterbalance China, particularly if China intensifies its actions around Taiwan. Taiwan itself could become a flashpoint in this power struggle, drawing in major powers if China were to escalate militarily. With China focusing on its claims in the Taiwan Strait, the United States and its allies may consider fortifying their own regional presence to preserve freedom of navigation and prevent China from altering the regional status quo by force. In essence, this border agreement has set the stage for a complex rebalancing of power, with India gaining flexibility, China concentrating on its eastern ambitions, and the US and its allies adjusting to this evolving landscape in the Indo-Pacific. In concluding, let's recap the key points and examine what they might mean on the world stage. The recent agreement between India and China to ease tensions along their disputed border, particularly at points like Demchok and the Depsang Plains, represents a potential turning point after years of strained relations. This disengagement allows both nations to lower the risk of direct military conflict along the line of actual control. For India, it opens the door to refocusing resources on its growing role in the Indo-Pacific strategy, particularly within the US-led Quad alliance. For China, however, this agreement is more than a simple de-escalation, it may signal a deliberate shift in strategy. With the western frontier now less of a focus, China could be reallocating critical military assets, funding, and diplomatic focus toward Taiwan and the broader South China Sea. China has dramatically increased its military exercises around Taiwan, demonstrating its readiness to act if provoked. These actions suggest that China views Taiwan as central to its national vision and is prepared to direct resources there, especially with rising U.S. support for Taiwan challenging its position. As the dust settles on the India-China border, all eyes turn eastward to Taiwan. Could this new agreement signal the start of China's intensified focus on Taiwan, and how will the world respond? 
The stage is set for a pivotal shift in global geopolitics, and the implications could reshape alliances and strategies across the Indo-Pacific,